Hi guys, Crystal here from Homemaking on the Homestead, and today I am going to show you how to make your very own pectin to be used in jam making. In order to make jam, you have to have some sort of pectin. All fruits naturally have pectin. Some have a lot in them and some have very little in them. And usually to speed up the process, we will add commercial pectin. That's been typically how it's been done for a while. But you have to realize that at some point in history, we look back and we know that commercial pectin such as this, sure gel, just wasn't available. So what? how did women make jam back then? And that is what I am doing, and I have used apples to do that. And in today's video, I am going to show you how I did that. And also, I am using it today, uh, right now, actually. I've got uh, some fruit going here, and uh, I am making some um, berry jam without with my own homemade pectin. I did a video a while back showing you how to make jam without pectin, and I will post the, that up here for you so that if you want to go take a look at that. Uh, usually when you make jam without pectin, it just takes longer. It takes a little bit more time to kind of coax out that pectin uh, and have that work in your fruits. Basically, pectin is in the fruit and you need some sort of acid and you need some sort of uh, sugar sweetener in it, and that helps to break down the molecules of of the pectin and that and, your, and get your jam made. Uh, that is my not terribly scientific def definition of it, but just to give you an idea why you need pectin. So when you are making your own pectin, you need to have fruit that is very high in acid and apples are. So if you are going to be making this, you need to use apples that are sour. Uh, unripe is fine. Uh, whatever it is, the sweeter the apple, the less acid in it. So you're looking for the maximum amount of pectin potential when you do this. So to make this today, I went down to my big old apple tree. That apple tree is a Granny Smith apple tree. It is probably 80 years old or more. The apples on it are, are pretty much useless at this point. They are, they are very tiny, they're extremely sour. The last many years, the apples just tend to go to the deer. I collect them and give them to the goats and things like that. But for the most part, uh, it just doesn't get used. And so I just got the idea when I wanted to make some jam. It's like, well, why not make our own pectin? So I went down to my tree and uh, was getting ready to try to pick some apples. But, you know, that tree is a big, tall tree. And uh, I, you know... I could grab the branch and kind of shake off what would fall and pick those up. And my husband with our old, old farm truck came to my rescue and he uh, drove the truck up under the trees so that he could help me pick up the apples. And in no time we had a nice big bowl of apples. I brought the apples back. I washed them all. Now when you're doing this, you do not need to peel them. You do not need to core them. It's a pretty simple process. So I just chopped up enough apples to fill my eight cup Pyrex glass measuring cup all the way to the top, so I probably had around 10 cups of apples, I'm going to guess. You put those into a pan, cover with water, almost cover. You just want it to the point, water in there to the point where the apples start to float. And then at that point, you put some heat on it and bring that to a boil. Turn it down, let it simmer, and let it cook. And it takes about two hours to just kind of simmer and cook like that. Uh, I would stir it occasionally and uh, just to kind of break things up. After everything is very, very mushy and soft, I took my colander, I lined it with a tea towel, and then I strained it out. And the trick is to be patient. So you know, I just let it sit overnight, even though after a not a whole lot of time I had gotten quite a bit of my pectin and you could see it filled up a quart jar. Uh, by the next morning there was just a little bit left over so I went ahead of course and added that into my pot. Now you take that strained juice and you're going to reduce it. Could be by at least half. It did activate the pectin basically. So in one test to make sure that, that the juice that you have 
is ready to go. Take a tablespoon of the liquid, put it into the refrigerator till it's nice and cold, then bring it out, add a teaspoon of rubbing alcohol, just isopropyl alcohol, and kind of stir it with a fork. At that point, if your pectin is ready to go, you should be able to just lift it out with the fork without any problem, and you'll see the gel bits. And now you know it's ready to go. So those are the basics on how to make it. Now, other fruit that is very high in acid and is got a, has a lot of pectin in it are citrus fruits. So you can do the same thing that I did with apples. You can use oranges, you can use lemons, you can use limes. Uh, whatever, whatever works uh, for you is convenient for you or you get a good deal on, uh, then this would be the way you could use that instead. So last night before I went to bed, I pulled out three bags of fruit that were had already been opened. They'd been sitting in my freezer for quite some time and it was really time for me to use them. I had some strawberries, I had blueberries, and I had some leftover blackberries that we picked last year. In all, I had six and a half pounds of fruit. So I have a lot of fruit. This morning I have gone ahead and heated all that up, got it all cooking until the fruit started to fall apart, kind of sped up the proce process by using my stick blender to break up the bigger chunks of strawberries and things and then I measured it out so I have 11 cups of fruit so basically with this method what you're going to do is you are going to for every cup of fruit puree that you have or fruit juice that you have you add one fourth a cup of your liquid pectin so I'm going to try that. I don't know for sure if I have enough because I've got a lot of fruit. And we still need to add sugar to this as well. But that is the starter. We're going to add the pectin and then we'll add the sugar. So the sugar ratio uh, that I, I've read different things. So I'm going to go with the minimum and then work my way up if I feel like I need more sugar. But uh, for every two cups of juice, you're going to add one cup of sugar. Some people say for every cup of juice, you add one cup of sugar. So I'm just going to play it by ear and see if, if I feel like my fruit needs more sweetener, I will add sugar. And you do need to add the sugar because it's the sugar uh, and the acid together that help to unlock the pectin for your fruit. So for my 11 cups of fruit, I am going to need one and three-fourths cup of this fruit pectin. And yes indeed I do have that. If I did not have enough of the pectin or if you make it and you find you don't have enough of your liquid pectin you can add two tablespoons of lemon juice as well for every cup of fruit puree that you have. I'm adding six cups of sugar for starters and my one and three-fourths cups of my homemade pectin. Now I am going to bring this to a boil, turn it down and simmer it, and I am just going to keep simmering and letting this cook until uh, we reach a gel stage. And I'll show you what that looks like. Like I said, I did a video on that that goes into that in more detail, but I will certainly show you what I have when I feel like it's ready. I also wanted to say that if you have a lot of this left over, you can can it just like you would jam in a boiling water bath for 10 minutes and it will be shelf stable. Uh, you can also freeze this, and uh, it lasts in the freezer about six months or so. Making jam this way can take extra time. So certainly a box of Sure Gel, it goes a lot faster. With this, you just kind of have to let it simmer and stir and check it uh, until you are, have reached that jelly stage. So uh, that is one advantage to using the box. However, the boxes are getting so expensive. It's just ridiculous to me. So I think this is a great way to get your pectin and save you some money in the process. Okay, so I did the frozen plate test, the frozen spoon test, and it showed me my jam was completely done. So I had decided already that I was going to be canning this up. So that's what I did. At that point, I put that hot jam into my jars and I put it into a boiling water bath for 10 minutes. So if you want to do that, you can. Otherwise, you can freeze it as well. All in all, I think this turned out great. It took me about two to two and a half hours to let all that fruit cook down. But I will say that that was a huge batch of jam. So. Uh, normally people do smaller batches and it would if you have a smaller batch I'm gonna bet 
that it would uh, gel up a lot faster. In the end though it turned out really good and it, it spreads nice and by the way what you're seeing on spreading on this toast right now that jam is still a little bit warm so when it cools down it'll set even more and some jams depending on the fruit can take several days to set. I hope that you guys found this video to be helpful, inspiring, or maybe you know you'll feel like making some pectin for yourself and it's nice to be able to have those kind of old-fashioned skills so that we know how to do things like this. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps out my channel so much. And uh, if you haven't subscribed and you're enjoying my content, would you consider subscribing? I'd love to see you back here again. All right, you guys, I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.